morning students today we are going to start the next lesson in supplementary reader name is boli that is written by ahmed abbas actually he is an indian film director screen writer novelist and journalist uh, he had written even short stories also in hindi english and urdu i don't know do you remember one hindi movies there saath hindustani that is actually in movies uh, released in 1970s 70 i think uh, this was the movie uh, amida bachchan became the hero and all so he had written um, script for other movies like kaavara bobi mera naam joker these are all hindi movies the so script writer he was born in 1914 in punjab and uh, he died in a 1987 this present lesson is about a girl named boli clear let us see from her very childhood boli was neglected at home why did her uh, teacher take special interest in her did boli uh, measure up to her teacher's expectation these are the questions answer we have to search in the after completing the lesson let us begin here we go her name was sulekha but since her childhood everyone had been calling her boli the simpleton actually her name is sulekha sulekha means uh, what a good uh, handwriting isn't it uh, so here uh, it is uh, sulekha it is uh, but her name childhood everybody used to call her by another name that is called boli the simpleton simpleton means a foolish person easily tricked by others very innocent girl she was the fourth daughter of nambardar lamlal uh, when she was 10 months old she had fallen off the cot on her head and perhaps it had damaged some part of her brain and why because when she was very small she, she fell down from the cot and uh, she got um, damaged her brain was damaged damage means hurt and some that is why that was why she remained a backward child backward child means special child we can say it we are not supposed to say backward now we say only special child and uh, came to be known as boli the simpleton it is that is the reason people started calling her boli the simpleton what says simpleton means a foolish person easily tricked by others at birth the child was very fair and pretty when she was born she was very beautiful but when she was 2 years old she had an attack of smallpox and only the eyes were saved but the entire body was permanently disfigured by deep black poke marks now you see when she was born she was very beautiful but when she was 2 years old what happened she was attacked by which disease smallpox and only her eyes were saved and but whole body was disfigured mean spoil deep black poke marks black, black uh, poke marks means marks of smallpox that is called poke marks little sulekha could not speak till she was 5 till she completed 5 years old she can't speak and when at last uh, she learned to speak she stammered stammered you know it no it is a uh, vik anu varaya and the other children often made fun of her and mimicked her mimic her means imitated her as a result she talked very little because kutti ingane stammer cheyina samayatha friends started teasing her so she stopped talking so much she talks very she talked very less ramlal had seven children the number dal ramlal had how many children seven children three sons and four daughters and the youngest of them was boli adile etum cheriya kutti ayirunnu boli and it was a prosperous farmer's household and there was plenty to eat and drink don't think that a children are they are not very poor they are have a lot of uh, what it's a farmer lot of cultivation was there so enough uh, things are there to eat and drink all the children except bolly were healthy and strong the rest of the seven children were very healthy and strong even we learned that when she was born she was very pretty it is a bad, bad luck she was affected by what smallpox that's why she her, only her eyes was saved and the whole body was disfigured the sons had been sent to the city to study in <coughs> schools <coughs> sorry and later in colleges there he was in those days they give more lot of importance to the boy uh, ch- uh, boys that is the children uh, sons 
he sent all of them in the colleges and schools of city of the daughters Radha the eldest had already been buried. So, now you let us see about the uh, three sons both of them three of them are educated and four daughters were there the eldest one was married what is the eldest one's name Radha. The second daughter Mangala's marriage had been settled and when that was done Ramlal could think of the third Chamba. So, there was four girls is not it first one is Radha, second one is um, uh, Mangala and the third one is Chamba and the fourth one is Boli. They were good looking all the girls were good looking good looking sorry except Boli healthy girls and it was not difficult to find bridegrooms for them. So, it was not so difficult for them to uh, for father to get the bridegrooms for the daughters. But Ramlal was worried about Bali. She had neither good looks nor intelligence. So, we learned that she is a uh, special child. She is a backward child. Why? How come she became backward? Because uh, one day she fell down from the court and her bad brain was damaged. That is what we learned. Because of and after that what happened? She was very pretty but she was affected by which disease? Smallpox and her full body was disfigured, only the eyes were left and uh, he ha she had what marks? Uh, black poke marks on her face. So, it was who was worried about her future? Uh, father. What was the father's name? Ramlal. And how many daughters she he had? He had four daughters and three sons. All the uh, th three sons were educated and the eldest daughter was married that was her name was Ratha. The second one also he started searching that is Mangalas, he had already settled that is fixed and the third one now he has to think about the third one's daughter that is Chamba, the fourth one is Bali. Only who, uh, why was Ramlal so worried? Ramlal was worried about whose future? The future of Bali. Bali was seven years old when Mangala was married. So, the <coughs> second daughter <coughs> called uh, Mangala was married when uh, what uh, what was uh, the Boli's age 7 years old. The same year a primary school for girls was opened in their village. Till then there was no sc uh, school for girls. When she completed 7 years what started? A girls uh, school started in the village. The Tahasildar Sahib came to perform its opening ceremony. He said to Ramlal as a revenue official, you are the representative of the government in the village. So, you must set an example to the villagers. You must send your daughters to school. Now, Ramlal is a government servant and his senior officer that is Tahsildar came to uh, for what inaugurate the new school and he asked him to send his daughters to whom? Uh, daughters to the school as an example. See, he is, uh, <coughs> he is called a Nambardar. Nambardar means an official who collects revenue. That person is known as Nambardar. Clear? So, he is a revenue collector, tax collector and bonus officer. I know. So, he, the seller asked him to send his daughters to school. That night, when Ramlal <coughs> consulted his wife, she cried, Are you crazy? If girls go to school, who will marry them? So, old thinking, isn't it? In those days, the girls were not allowed to study. What was the her mom, wife's uh, decision? Who will marry our daughters if they go to school? But Ramlal had not the courage to disobey the Tahasildar. He, Ramlal was so worried about uh, whom? About Tahasildar because he is uh, his uh, superior officer. At last his wife said, I will tell you what to do, send Boli to school. Even mother wanted uh, whom to send school, Boli to school. As it is, there is little chance of her getting married with her ugly face and lack of sense. Let the teachers at school worry about her. These are the clarifications or explanations given by her mother. Why do she want to send her daughter to the school? It is not because she is having a lot of uh, love towards her daughter. Just because she is not beautiful and uh, she is uh, having less intelligence. So, the mother thought that uh, who will take care of her? The teachers will worry about her. No, it is not necessary to worry about whom? Bali. So, it is a very bad attitude, isn't it? The next day, because in those days the ladies are not educated, they do not know the importance of education, they considered the getting a good uh, bridegroom or a son-in-law is the uh, best uh, blessing for them. So, the next day Ramlal caught Boli by the hand and said, come with me, 
I will take you to school. So then in the morning, the Ramlal, why, why do Ramlal wanted to send their daughter to the school? It is just because he is a, he does not want to uh, displease whom? His senior officer, Tahsildar. Who was the Tahsildar? Tahsildar visited their village to inaugurate the new school. What did the Tahsildar ask? Uh, um, uh, Ramlal, Tahsildar asked the Ramlal to send her daughters to school. Uh, that will be an example to the rest of the villagers. That means if you send the uh, your daughters to school, the other villager, villagers will be get motivated. That is what the who said Tahsildar. So that is why he wanted to send uh, home her daughters to school. But his wife was not ready to send the rest of the girls. That is uh, Chamba. Why? Because he thought she thought that if she will send her daughter to the school, what will happen? Nobody will come and marry her. So, at last they decided to send uh, whom to school? Boli to school. So, the morning Ramlal approached Boli and said that uh, get ready, you have to go to school. Boli was frightened. She was first time she is hearing about the school. She did not know what a school was like. Why was she frightened? Because she does not know the meaning of the school. She remembered how a few days ago their old cow Lakshmi had been turned out of the house and sold. She was remembering about one of their old cow. What was the name of the cow? Lakshmi. They sold the cow. So, she was remembering about it. No, 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 no. She shouted in terror and pulled her hand away from her father's grip. She, who was holding her hand? The father was holding the hand. He was, she was not ready to, she was pulling her hand. What is the matter with you, you fool? shouted Ramlal. I am only taking you to school. Then he told his wife, let her wear some decent clothes today or else what will the teachers and the other school girls think of us when they see her. So they are not bothered to dress up whom also, Boli also. So the first day uh, Ramlal is taking her to the school. So she he asked his wife to make wear uh, Boli nice dress because who will think uh, about them badly? the rest of the villagers and the teachers. See, now new clothes had never been made for Boli. Very bad condition Boli had because she is a special child and she is to stammer while speak. She does not have beautiful face though nobody is bothered about her. The old dresses of her sisters were passed on her. What type of dress she is to wear? Second hand dresses. No one cared to mend or wash her clothes and today she was lucky to receive clean dress which had shrunk after many washings and no longer fitted Chamba. Chamba's dress, elder sister, her uh, third sister, isn't it? So, who, what did they say? They had given Chamba's dress to, uh, to whom? To Boli to wear. She was even bathed and oil was rubbed into her dry and matted hair. Only then did she begin to believe that she was being taken to a place better than her home. This sentence is very important. See, this is the first time she was uh, given bath by oiling in the hair and uh, dressed up nicely. So, she thought that she is taking to a better place than home. Otherwise, she was not um, knowing about what? Knowing about the school. So, here it is written the matted hair. It is given in the textbook that is entangled, entangled hair, it was very dry. This is the first time who is applying the mother is applying her, uh, her hair oil. When they reached the school, the children were, were, were already in their classrooms. When they reached, it was late, so already the children were seated in the class. Ramlal handed over his daughter to the headmistress. Left alone, the poor girl looked about her with fear laden eyes. The father just left the girl in the whose office, the mistress office and he left. Who was so worried? The girl was very upset. There were several rooms and in each room girls like her squatted on mats. Squatted means sat in the, <coughs> sat with closed legs and reading from books or writing on slate. She observed so many rooms were there. In those rooms, the girls like her are sitting on the mat and they were writing something on their slates and uh, reading something from the books. The headmistress asked Boli to sit down in corner in one of the classrooms. So, what did the headmistress uh, said? You go and sit in one of the classrooms. Boli did not know what exactly a school was like and what happened there. 
but she was glad to find so many girls almost of her age and present there. He, she hoped that one of these girls might become her friend. Just see, she did not have any friend also. Even at home also, nobody pays any attention towards her. So that's why when she reached there, first he was, uh, she was very upright. Then she had seen so many girls were around and they were all uh, of her age and she wished that one of the girl will become her friend. The lady teacher who was in the class was saying something to the girls but Boli could understand nothing. When she entered the class, the teacher was ta teaching something who did not understand anything. Boli did not understand anything. She looked at the pictures on the wall. The colors fascinated her, attracted her. The horse was brown just like the horse on which the Tahsildar had come to visit their village. The goat was black like the goat of their neighbor. The parrot was green like the parrots he, she had seen in the mango orchard. And the cow was just like their Leshmi. And suddenly, Boli noticed that the teacher was standing by her side, smiling at her. So she was sitting in the class because when she learned, when she had, she observed that the teacher was teaching something who could not understand anything, Boli could not understand anything. What did she do? She was just observing the pictures hung on the uh, walls. What did she see? See, she had seen a horse, the same color. She, he was a brown color. Then she compares the picture of the horse with the horse in which who came visited the village, the Tahasilda. Then she had seen the black goat. Goat was a neighbor's neighbor. Her neighbor had a goat, the same color. The parrot she had observed the, in the orchard. And uh, then uh, she had seen a cow. Then she the picture of the cow is compared with her own uh, cow called Lakshmi. Suddenly she observed who was standing next to her. The class, teacher was standing and she was smiling. The teacher was very kind and she was smiling at her. What is your name little one? Bo, 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 because she had what problem? The stammering. She could stammer no further than that. She cannot even speak properly. That's why she cannot pronounce the, her name. Then what happened? Just have a look. Then she began to cry and tears flowed from her eyes in the helpless mood. She kept her head down as she sat in the corner, not daring to look up at the girls who she knew were still laughing at her. Why was she when the crying? Because she can't even speak properly. She knew that who were observing all these things, the rest of the girls were observing. And she had seen that the girls were laughing while she was stammering. When the school bell rang, all the girls scurried out of the classroom. Scurried out means ran, hurried, leave. They all ran outside. Uh, but Boli dared not leave her corner. She doesn't want to go out of the classroom. Her head still lowered. She kept on sobbing. That says sobbing. She was crying. Boli, the teacher's voice was so soft and soothing. Very consoling voice. Whose words were very consoling? the teachers. In all her life, she had never been called like that. It touched her heart. And soothing words of teachers touched whose heart? Boli's heart. Get up, said the teacher. It was not a command, but just a friendly suggestion. Boli got up. Very friendly way, the teacher approached her. Now tell me your name. Sweet uh, broke out over her whole Sweat, sorry, sweat broke out over her whole body. Why she was sweating? Because of tension. Would her stammering tongue again disguise her? She was started thinking about, uh, is it possible for me to say my name? For the sake of this kind woman, however, she decided to make an effort. She had such a soothing voice, she would not laugh at her. She thought that the teacher is very nice lady, so uh, she must uh, speak about her uh, name. She said, bo, bo, bo. She began to stammer. Paran, complete Paran Pachila. Well done, well done. The teacher encouraged her. Come on now, the full name. Bo, bo, bo. She only that much, she said that. Who was encouraging her? The teacher was encouraging her. Boli. At last, she was able to say it and uh, felt relieved as if it was a great achievement. So, she was so happy when she could uh, pronounce the name. Well then, the teacher patted her affectionately. Patted means tap her very lovingly and said, put the fear out of your heart and you will be able to speak like everyone. Everyone, yes, you don't have to worry about your 
uh, stammering you can speak uh, like any other person. Bolly looked up as if to ask really? She was very innocent isn't it? Teacher to teach Sherikim can I speak very nicely? Yes, yes it will be very easy you just come to school every day will you come? What was the uh, advice given by the teacher? You come to school every day then it will be easy for you to speak also uh, smoothly. Bolly nodded. Now, no, say it aloud. No nodding. You speak. Yes, yes. She was stammering again. And Bolly herself was astonished that she had been able to say it. Didn't I tell you? Now, take this book. Now, the teacher was encouraging her to speak. The book was full of, the teacher had given her a book. The full was, book was full of nice pictures and the pictures were in color. Dog, cat, goat, horse, parrot, tiger. And a cow just like Lishmi. All the animals pictures were there. And with every picture was a word in big black letters. The names of the animals were given in black letters. In one month you will be able to read this book. Then I will give you a bigger book. But what did the teacher say? You finish it by one month. Next month onwards I will give you a bigger book. Then a still bigger one. In time. You will be able to able you will be more learned than anyone else in the village. So slowly, slowly you will become a very uh, well learned person of the village. Then no one will ever be able to laugh at you. People will listen to you with respect and you will be able to speak without the slightest slammer, stammer. Understand? Now go home and come back early morning tomorrow morning. Early tomorrow morning. So Nale school lake thirchivarna. Bolly felt as if suddenly all the bells in the village, village temple were ringing and the trees in front of the school house had blossomed into big red flowers. Her heart was throbbing with a new hope and a new life. Now she is uh, taken into a new life because at home nobody was paying any attention to her. She, they, she never got a new dress. She always wears the old clothes of her sisters, isn't it? Now here the teacher is encouraging her to speak. The teacher is giving her books and lot of support. So who was very happy? Boli was very happy. Thus the years passed and the village became a small town. A lot of changes had taken place. The village was changed into a town. The little primary school became a high school. There were now a cinema under a tin shed. And a cotton ginning mill. So ginning mill is separating raw cotton from the from its seeds. So what were what are the changes taken place? See, cinema started and cotton mill has come. The mail train began to stop at their railway station. Even the uh, train also started stopping their uh, place. One night after dinner, Ramlal said to his wife, "Then shall I accept uh, Bishamba's proposal now?" At night, the mother and father, whose mother and father, Boli's mother and father were talking and his father was asking how his wife, shall I accept Bishamba's proposal? Yes, certainly, his wife said, Boli will be lucky to get such a well-to-do bridegroom. A big shop, a house of his own and I hear several thousand in the bank, moreover, he is not asking for any dowry. Now the mother doesn't like her, isn't it? She is saying that yes, an old man is coming to marry whom? Boli. And uh, my father is asking the permission of his wife, that is Boli's mother. What was uh, the Boli's mother saying? She is very lucky to get a, such a rich person. He is having a lot of money in the bank. And not only that, he has a big house, he has a big shop, etc. That is right, but he is not so young, you know, almost the same as I am. And he also limbs. Moreover, the children from his first wife are quite grown up. But father, Ramlal is not so happy because Ramlal said that this uh, bridegroom, that is Bishamba, his second marriage. He already had a first marriage and in that marriage, grown up children are there. Not only really that. His age is the same age as Boli's father and he is to limp also while uh, walking. So the father, mother, just see what is the mother saying. So what does it matter? So um, uh, mother is saying, Boli's mother is saying that is hardly makes any difference. 45 or 50, what is the age of that bride, uh, bridegroom? 
45 or 50, it is no great age for man. Anungalde, adhuri prayam alla. We are lucky that he is from another village and does not know about folk, folk marks and her lack of sense. If we don't accept this proposal, she may remain unmarried all in all her life. What is the mother saying? If you are not ready to get married uh, boldly to this Bishamba, what will happen? She will remain an unmarried lady. Because this man is from another village, he does not know about uh, this marks, spoke marks of Boli and she has less intelligence also. But father, what is the father saying? Yes, but I wonder what Boli will say. So, but I am, uh, Ramlal is worried whether who will agree or not, Boli will agree or not. What will that witness one say? She is like a dumb cow. See, mother is saying witness means Witless uh, means foolish person. Maybe you are right, muttered Ramlal. So, the mother is not at all supporting whom? Boli. In the other corner of the courtyard, Boli lay awake on her coat, listening to her parents' whispered con conversation. So, Boli did not sleep. The, from the other room, who was listening all the conversation? Boli was listening. Bishop Nath was a well-to-do grocer. He, said he had a grocery shop. He came with a big party of friends and relations with him for the wedding. So, the wedding day came. A brass band playing a popular tune from an Indian film headed the procession. A band uh, is also there with the bridegroom riding a decorated horse. He is a rich man, no? So, he is coming in the horse. Ramlal was overjoyed to see such pomp and splendor. Splendor is grace. Shosha. Senate, who was so uh, very uh, proud to see all this procession, marriage procession, Ramlal. He had never dreamt that his fourth daughter would have such a grand wedding. Boli's elder sisters who had come for the occasion were envious of her love. They are all jealous of whom? Jealous of Boli because Boli is going to get married to a rich person. When the auspicious moment uh, came, the priest said, bring the bride. Who said the priest called, uh, said that uh, bring the bride. Boli, clad in a red silken bridal dress, was led to the bride's place near the secret fire. Garland, the bride, one of the friends prompted uh, Bishamba Nath. One of, the, one of his friends asked him to put the garland. The bridegroom lifted the garland of yellow marigolds. Marigold is the kind of flower. A woman slipped back the silken veil from the bride's face. Malay dan poyapoyindidu, adithirinna lady, the boli de veil mati. Veil removed. Bishamba took a quick glance. The garland remained poised in his hands. Poised means stuck. He did not put the garland. It was stuck. Bishamba took a good, good a quick glance. Garland remained poised in his hands. The bride slowly pulled down the veil over her face. Petan the boli in the edu, veila, tare kitu, netting in a tare kitu moham, marchu. Have you seen her? said Bishamba to the friend next to him. She has poke marks on her face. Bishamba first time seeing the bride. He has observed the poke marks on her, on her face. So what? You are not young either. One of his friends said that you are also quite old, you are not so young. Maybe, but if I am to marry her, her father must give me 5,000 rupees. Now, who started demanding the dowry? Uh, Bishamba started saying, if I have to marry this ugly woman, who should give dowry? Uh, the bride's father should give dowry. How much money he asked? 5,000 rupees. Ramlal went and placed his turban, his honor at Bishamba's feet. Do not humiliate me so. Take 2000 rupees. He said that. Ramlal, when did you? Talele, Pagdi, Anna, in the Varena, Talele, Kitina, Anna, in the Varena, the Turban and the Varena, the Uri, Kavachu, Ade, Arade, Munilla, Bisham, and the Tubaranu. You take 2000 rupees. I don't have 5000 rupees. See, what did the Bishamba say? No, 5000, or we go back. Keep your daughter. Your daughter will remain at your house. <coughs> I am not going to marry her. Be a little considerate, please. Considerate means understand. Uh, if you go back, I can never show my face in the village. It is a disgrace for me in the friend of other villagers. 
then out with 5000 then bishamba said that if this a disgrace if the marriage is not uh, uh, you can if the marriage get cancelled it is a disgrace means you give me 5000 rupees tears streaming down from his face streaming means flowing Ramlal went in, opened the safe and counted out the notes. He placed the bundle at the bridegroom's feet. What did he do? Uh, Boli's father took 5000 rupees and kept it on the feet of whom? Uh, whom? Bishamba. On Bishamba's greedy face appeared a triumphant smile, victory. Isn't it? Triumphant is victory. He had gambled and won. He just bargained and got the dowry. Give me the garland, he announced. Now I am ready to marry who? Boli. Once again, the veil was slipped back from the bride's face. But this time, her eyes were not downcast. Downcast means downwards. She was not bending down. She was just looking at whose face? Bishanta's face. She was looking up, looking straight at her prospective husband. Prospective means possible husband. And in her eyes, there was neither uh, anger nor hate, only cold and contempt. Contempt is utter hatred. She just looked at her husband's face. What was the feeling she had? Only hatred. Bishanda raised the garland to place it round the bride's neck. But before he could do so, Boli's hand struck out like a streak of lightning. And the garland was flung into the fire. What did he, what did he, streak of lightning means line of lightning. Flung means thrown. Flung into the fire. She got up and threw away the veil. Didu, Boli got up and stood there. Then she just uh, threw the veil. Uh, Nete Mati. Pitaji, Pitaji means father, uh, said Boli in a clear, loud voice. And her father, mother, sisters, brothers, relations, and neighbors were startled to hear her speak without even the slightest stammer. When she started speaking, what did she do? When, uh, when this uh, Bishamba was about to put garland on, his, on her uh, neck, what did she do? She just got up. And she threw the garland into the fire. Then she called the father. When she spoke, uh, people were startled, surprised. Because she could speak very fluently. That stammering was not there. The relatives were surprised. The sisters were surprised. Pidaji, take back your money. You please take that money, that dowry you had given to Bishamba. Please take it back. I am not going to marry this man. I don't want to marry this man. They considered her as what? She is not an intelligent person. She is lacking sense. That's what who said? The mother said. Ramlal was thunderstruck. Thunderstruck. The guests began to whisper. So shameless, so ugly and so shameless. Because it is a town, uh, it's a town but uh, people can't take it uh, in that way. They, they consider the girls are not supposed to speak. Actually, giving dowry is uh, in those days it was accepted. Boli, are you crazy? shouted Ramlal. You want to disgrace your family? Have some regard for our Izzat. Nyangada Apimanam. Izzat is Apimanam. Self respect. Nyangada self respect ne kurchorka. Don't degrade us. Please get married. Who said? The father. For the sake of your Izzat, said Boli, I was willing to marry this lame old man. But I will not have such a mean, greedy and contemptible coward as my husband. I won't. I won't. I won't. What did she say that? You said, for, for your Izzat, I am ready to marry this lamed person. But I don't want, but I will not have such a mean, I don't want whom? Greedy and contemptible coward as my husband. I don't want such a greedy person as my husband. What a shameless girl. We all thought she was a harmless dumb cow. People started speaking. We thought that she's a dumb foolish cow. Boli turned wildly on the old man who she, old woman. Yes auntie, you are right. You all thought I was a dumb driven cow. That is why you wanted to hand me over to this heartless creature. 
But now the dumb cow, the stammering fool is speaking. Do you want to hear more? She was she became very bold and sensible after her education, isn't it? Who supported her? Actually, the teacher supported her, isn't it? When the old lady, a village old lady is saying that, we thought that you are a very foolish cow, isn't it? She called harmless uh, cow. So, what a shame. It's a shame for the family. That's what the old lady said. What is the reply given by Boli? Boli said that, yes, I am. you all thought that I am a, uh, what, uh, harmless dumb cow. But now, do you want to hear what, uh, what more I am going to speak? See, I do not have stammering now. Bishamba the grocer, started to go back with his party. So, Bishamba, the bridegroom uh, is planning to go back home. The confused bandsman thought this was the end of the ceremony and struck up a closing song. So, the band people, the musicians, they did not know that what is happening there, isn't it? They started uh, uh, playing the last song closing song. Ramlal stood rooted to the ground, his head bowed low with the uh, weight of grief and shame, who was becoming very uh, upset, the father. The flames of sacred fire slowly died down, everyone was gone. Ramlal turned to Boli and said, but what about you? No one will ever marry you now. What shall we do with you? That was the question asked by the father. What were you planning to do? No other person will come and marry you. And Suleka said in a voice that was calm and steady, don't you, don't you worry. Pidaji, in your old age, I will serve you and mother and I will teach in the same school where I learned so much. Isn't that right, ma'am? Now she said that. She asked, said, mother, I am there to look after you, father and mother. I will stay with you. I don't need any marriage. Then she turned towards the teacher and asked, I will teach in the same school where I learnt, where I was taught. The teacher had all along stood in the corner watching the drama. The teacher was there for the marriage of whom? Boli and observing all the things. Yes, Boli, of course, she replied. Yes, you can teach in the same school. And in her smiling eyes was the light of a deep satisfaction that an artist feels when contemplating the completion of her masterpiece. That was compared to what? To an artist feels when contemplating the completion of her masterpiece. When you complete a particular piece of art, when it is completed, when you get that satisfaction, you will, you will have a smile. The same type of smile who had, Boli had in her face. That is all. Very good uh, story, isn't it? Uh, thank you. I hope you understood. If you have any doubts, you can contact me. Thank you.